when Tracy and her colleagues were doing a workshop, we broadcast all day long. And it says that we're live. We are. Wow, look at that. Let's see. It is. Okay. Do you have like a monitor that you're checking? No, I, my phone. Yeah, monitor. Um. <laughs> yeah, I was just looking at my phone. Okay. Um. Hi guys, what's up? This is Alan and Eli from the Book Supplier. You're on my channel, so you know that my channel name is Up by Reddit. We're gonna be talking about what are we talking about? The sellout. We're talking about the sellout by oh Paul my gosh. Beatty. Do you want to? And is that how is that how you say his name? Beatty, Beatty. I, I'm pretty sure it's Beatty. Like when, okay, I had to try to get into the book, so I listened to like the first couple of chapters on audiobook, and the guy said Beatty. So okay. I would think that if it was an audiobook, they would get the author's name right. So I'm gonna go with Beatty. Sounds like a plan. Even though it looks like Beatty to me. Anyway. <laughs> I Do, can't find link. Would you like to start? Would I like? Uh, here, here's what I'll start with. <laughs> this was a really, really hard read for me. <laughs> like, really hard. I, I, I realized, I realized that I am not well versed in literary fiction, and clearly, I'm also not well versed in like super stereotypes of black culture because there are things that I missed. And then I was reading like the New York Times review and I was like, oh. <laughs> I didn't get that. I didn't see that part. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, no, no. Like, like apparently the novel starts similar to and then satirizes heavily in um, The Invisible Man, Ralph Ellison. I've Which read that. I have not read. Okay, good. So it's not just me. I was really scared that we were going to go into this and you were going to, like, black check me. <laughs> well, I guess um, my subscribers can kind of check me because I think I was supposed to have read Invisible Man on this channel minimum three times. Like, I'm pretty sure I was supposed to read it for a book tubathon. I was supposed to read it with Simon from Savage Reads. And then there was another time I was supposed to read it. And not to mention, it was a gift from a subscriber. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, as long as my black card doesn't get revoked, I'm okay. <laughs> I mean, I think in past videos, it's been revoked a lot of times. I mean, but you keep getting it back, so. Well, yeah. Yes, because well, because I know you. <laughs> I um, I really liked this book. Like, I it took fifty, almost seventy five pages for me to like get into it. But once I started r realizing how he was writing, it just I just finished the rest like really really fast. And it also when you were like, it seems like he comments on everything using the the, the most words possible. I was like. That's like the realest statement ever because I was like, that's so <laughs> true. He has to say something about everything using all the words. And I don't think I've ever used the dictionary more reading a book than I did with this one. Uh, yeah, I don't think I did that very, that very much. But I do also have the advantage of having read it on my Kindle. Mm. So all I have to do is press the word. He cheated. My library didn't have it. Yeah, I, will, I read this at work, and I read a library copy, which I don't think was a great idea because I really should have been tabbing stuff. Yeah. But I think my favorite part was that story that um, he told about the, 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 with the kid with the, with the flower on his face. Oh, yeah. Um, for those of you who don't know, this story is about... <laughs> Like, we just do this drop, right? And making assumptions about the audience, you know, whatever. This story is about... I don't know how to explain it. So, so old dude, like, decided... He, he, lives in the, he lives in this town that was, like, close to L.A., and it, that was essentially erased. And he's on... Well, the, the frame of the story is he's on trial for trying to reinstitute slavery and, and segregation in this small town. And uh, he's also at the same time trying to get the town put back on the map, which is very important to some of the members of the community. 
and uh, yeah. So whenever I need a book explained, I'm just going to call you and say, hey, can you insert a little blurb onto my channel? You realize this is my job, right? <laughs> like, well, I get paid to explain books to people. <laughs> and, uh, then, and then get them to I read see. them. You are very good at it. Oh, thank you. But yeah, like, the reason why I said I couldn't explain it is because it is about that, but it's not about that. Right, right. I mean, it's, it's, it's very much satire um and as you previously said he satirizes everything he everything does. i felt like then and in that regard i felt like it was a little too much like <sighs> i think he did go overboard a little bit to the point where some stuff kind of flew over my head and i i feel like like i know that i'm the type of person like i sh I, I knew most of the stuff, but he like went, you you are right, he did go a little far. Except for when he was talking about too many Mexicans, that was kind of funny. <laughs> I, I think that was my favorite part. That whole chapter with the teacher, I mean the, the principal and the school situation. Uh -huh. And then, let me do, let's stick my book over here. And then when he posted the sign outside the black school with the white school, and then it made the black school do better because they felt like they had competition. Mm -hmm. And I was kind of like, oh, that's awesome. And I was kind of like, oh, that's sad at the same time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, you don't know what story I'm talking about. The story with the kid with the flower. Why can't I, I find it? I don't remember that, but I can I can search for it. That's I can search funniest, for flower. Funniest, funniest story. Uh, is it this, is it the same point with as when it, the too many Mexicans? Uh, I don't know. I I'm pretty sure I tabbed it on Goodreads. I'm about to look. Okay. I d I did find the too many Mexican story. <laughs> oh. Yeah, and then when he was talking yeah. when she when the the principal was talking in Spanish and she was like, yeah, we're fucked. <clears throat> speaking speaking of do you watch insecure yes but i have not started this new season because oh you okay, need to so i badly. do and you know what i just need to turn it on and let it play because the problem that i had with last season was that i was getting aggravated because i wanted more and all oh, those little 30 minutes were just not satisfying enough yeah and that's I, that's that's what that's what twitter is saying like over and over again like 30 minutes isn't cutting it. We need an hour. Hell yeah. Can we uh, at least 45? Come on, like. Okay, so so my giggle about about too many Mexicans and insecure, you'll get you'll get once you start the second season. Oh lord. <laughs> you know what? I think what? when I when I because I like to comment on Goodreads when I'm reading a book. I think mm. I should probably write more because I wrote some stuff and I don't even know what this what this means. It says, <laughs> oh, I just got the one hand thing. I don't even know what that is. What? Um, okay. <laughs> I don't even know what I wrote. I, yeah. Um, I did quote some stuff. When a white bitch got problems, she's a damsel in distress. When a black bitch got problems, she's a welfare cheat and a burden on society. How come you never see any black damsels? Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your weave. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that. I think I laughed out loud. <laughs> like literally, and I'm laying in bed, and Tracy's like, what is, what's so funny? <laughs> then this one, and by Mexicans, I mean all people central, south, north, and whatever Americas have you, native born and otherwise. Mm hmm. And I think I think that is a that is a it's particularly like spot on bit of commentary, especially when considering political climate and whatever. Mm -hmm. And who the, you know the the tweeter in chief is all like, we're gonna send all of them back to Mexico, except that all of the all of the Spanish speaking. Immigrants don't come from Mexico. 
Oh, I found the story. All right. What chapter are you in? I'm gonna. It's on. I don't know what chapter. It's on page 188. It is. It's the too many Mexicans chapter. It is. Ah. Uh, okay. Good. No, it's chapter 15. It's the too many Mexicans section. Um, too many Mexicans section was chapter 11. It is. It's, it's chapter 15. Okay. Page okay. 188. Done. I'm gonna read it because I really want to. Go for it. And it says. It. A little black boy is in the kitchen watching his mother fry up some chicken. Seeing the flour, he dabs some on his face. Look at me, Ma, he says. I'm white. What did you say, says his mama. And the boy says, look at me, I'm white. What? His mama slaps the shit out of him. Don't you ever say that, she says. Then tells him to go tell his father what he said to her. Crying hard as Niagara Falls, the boy goes up to his father. What's wrong, son? No, mom slapped me. Why she do that, son? His father asked. <laughs> because I said I was white. Blam! His father slaps him even harder than his mama did. Now go tell your grandmother what you said. She'll teach you. So the boy's crying and shaking and all confused. He approaches his grandmother. Why, baby? What's wrong? She asks, and the boy says, <laughs> and the boy says, they slap me. Why, baby? Why they do that? He tells her his story, and when he gets to the end, his grandmama slaps him so hard, she almost knocks him down. Don't you ever say that, she says. And what did you learn? The boy starts rubbing his cheek and says, I learned that I've been white for only 10 minutes and I hate you niggas already. <laughs> that was the best story. I told that to everybody at work. <laughs> yeah, so I was confused. And flower, F L O. You are not flower F L O W E R. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't even think about the other spelling of flower. My yeah. bad. No, no, it really was my bad. <laughs> like, oh, let me you know, let me think about this a little bit harder. But yeah, that um that story cracked me up. That, that was I don't know. Bad. I really enjoyed this. I thought I wasn't I didn't think I was gonna like it, especially because of how it started off. I think the thing that helped me a lot, though, was like, yeah, yeah. like when I first started reading it, I just couldn't get into it. And I just listened to it on audiobook for like 20, 25 pages or so. Mm -hmm. And that helped a lot, especially because the guy, I, I really liked how he sounded. And then after after him, it was like easy. Yeah, that works. I, I remember starting the prologue and thinking it was hilarious and doing the whole, hey, look at this, you get to read this part. Oh, wait, no, look at this, you have to read this part. And then when I got to chapter one, I was so confused. Now see, the because prologue the confused me. Okay. <laughs> it wasn't just... <laughs> there was a prologue that I was confused about because I was like, why is he using so many words? I, I had um, Ta-Nehisi Coates Between the World and Me flashbacks. Um, too many big words. My brain is not equipped for this type of thing. So, yeah, it's like this is this is not for um, people who are just going back to college after they've dropped out. <laughs> I don't. I don't necessarily think that that is true. <laughs> um, I kid. I kid. But I mean, I, I do think it's challenging. Here's something that I thought was interesting. Um, and I, I wonder, I, and I don't have, I don't have thoughts on it, but I, I wonder what you think about it. So, um, niggas all over the place. And, and, but he uses ER. I think every time. So, like, why are, uh, uh, why would, why do you think he made the choice, basically? I kind of wonder what he's trying to say. I don't know. I think the statement he could possibly making is that there is no difference because you know how we've tried to say there is a difference between ER mm -hmm. and A and I guess maybe he could be making that same. I thought about that too, but I kind of like stopped thinking about it because then I was like, I'm not saying nigger in my head. Right. right. So See, and that's, that's the interesting piece because I wasn't either. Because I don't like that word. <laughs> Well, but, in, in context, you know? Yeah. 
And so that's, I think that's our socialization. And so that's how our socialization plays out in our reading of this particular novel, because I mean, that's how we think, you know? And I think also too, because um, of the color of the character, the main character, like, yeah. wh or whoever was saying the word, I wouldn't imagine them saying it with an ER, but that could also be why he did put the ER because the title of the book is a sellout and he's a sellout, but he's not really a sellout. Well, chalk it up to satire. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. I think uh, I'm gonna try to use what um, Nettie Okorafor said in the, the Book of Phoenix when she was talking about, after it's written, the author is dead. There's a lot of conversation. Of, there, there was back when I was active in Nerdfighteria about author's purpose and it's like, is this important? It doesn't matter because reading is transactional and let me, let me, let me go all uh, literacy specialist on you right now. Um, reading is transactional and, and you can't separate a reading of a text from a reader's prior knowledge. Mm -hmm. And you also have to remember like in oral storytelling, a, a story changes based on its teller and technically reading a book is storytelling because you are the person telling the story to yourself. Mm -hmm. So, it's gonna change. Well, and even even in even in the oral tradition, what what a listener gets out of one listener gets out of it is not going to be the same as what another listener gets out of it. I mean, I think about this. This is a thing that I, I talk about with my students all the time, and it's like, so my experience of the faults in our stars is going to be very different from your experience of the faults in our stars because that's where I come from. That is my section of Indianapolis. So I have all of this nostalgia that you're not going to have because you've never been there. Right. Uh, so. And it could change even from your first read to your next read, depending yep. on where you are in your life. Yep. So. I remember rereading things and I'm like, why? I don't even understand how this spoke to me so much when I was younger. <laughs> but yeah, I really enjoyed it. I was trying to see what you uh, rated it on Goodreads. I don't think you did. I don't think I did either. But I can check. Let me check. Uh, did he didn't think I would like this. She didn't. No, she did not. No, what that was. <laughs> are, are you salty about that? It sounds like you have some attitude. <laughs> I feel like you are being instigating right now. Me? Yeah, you're being instigated. Now stop. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I was no, I didn't. About I didn't it. write it. No. I was just shocked. I was like, hmm, why? She was like, I don't know. We have two viewers. Oh, wow. Hi, whoever you are. <laughs> I forgot how to go and see if I can, how to chat with people. I forgot how to um, do that. Hmm, um, let me see. That's not true. It's telling me that your, your channel is not available. <laughs> I'll probably both like stop talking about the book just to because <laughs> who's paying attention to us right now. <laughs> oh, it helps if I am on the right. Let's try that one. Hey, and there you are on my front page. People get ready. There's a tree. I'm learning how to play that on my ukulele. Let's um, see. So, so Tati and uh, Stace reads a bit. Hi, guys. <laughs> I see. I see. Oh. Tati says she can't see me. What? You really can't see me? What? Yeah, when you're talking, it's not. it's not switching back to you. Well, that's interesting. Um, you should have control over that, actually. And how? Hmm. Uh, in the control room on the left-hand side. I see that. 
And, and it should it does allow you to. It, no. No. Mm. Yeah. Turn my camera off. And back okay. on. I can see myself. Can you see me? I can. I can see you in our hangout, but I can click on you and force that to come up to my to the front on my screen. Interesting. Yeah, because I don't want everybody looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> well, apparently they have been the whole time. Uh, oh, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, okay then. Let, let me uh, Google. Let me Google it. Okay. Let's see. I should be able to side by side this so I can like. Nope. Come on. And we pause for technical difficulties. Dead air, gotta love the dead air. Okay, so I really like how this looks, the, the chat. Like, when I send a message, it has like a crown next to my name. Hmm. <laughs> and they still can't see me. No. And I don't know how to fix that. <laughs> what did Google say? What'd you say? What did Google say? Uh... Well, I found a video explaining how camera switching on air works. <laughs> Except that. Wait, uh, I can see myself. She said, now we can. I don't know what I did. So, yeah. Okay, I'm not, I'm not seeing you. Oh, yep, yeah, <laughs> there we go. There we go. Got it. Got it. <laughs> Hi guys. <laughs> Let me fix my shirt so you Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> you guys missed us talking about the book and my face wasn't even on it. <laughs> but man. That was fun. A lot of a lot of, a lot of people looking at me. Mm. <laughs> That's okay. You you explained the book anyway, so it was I guess it's a a win-win in that situation. So yeah, I have okay. a, a so you everyone on one side of my screen, and then the chat on the other side. Yeah, so. that's what mine looks like right now too. I can check on it and stuff. So then I can then I can also see the chat and like, hi guys. <laughs> yeah. Have any of you guys read this book? Tati, have you read this? Probably not. Oh, wait, wait, no, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> I didn't mean it like that. <laughs> Look at you. Look at you throwing shade. <laughs> oh, I didn't mean it like that. Oh, I didn't mean it like that. What else has uh, been happening or was going on in the book that we want to talk about? So... <laughs> What was the point of the dumb, dumb donut intellectual? Uh, <laughs> like, to make us laugh? I, I don't know. Oh, so Stace Reads a Bit says she hasn't read it and she came in too late to hear us talk about it. So, so to catch you up, <laughs> real, real quick in a nutshell. You missed um, my story. Oh, you you mean the one about the flower? Yes. F L O U R, not F L O W E R. <laughs> I was so seriously. I had pictures of like the magician, but instead of an apple, a flower in the face, and yeah, I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> so it, it's it's about this essentially. And let me explain it differently this time. It's about a guy's relationship with uh, his town and the people in the town, and it's framed by this court case about um, how he has decided to um, re-institute re uh, segregation in this town and slavery. His town um, that was a town, but is no longer right. a town geologically and on the map and stuff. Yeah. And it's a satire? 
Yes. Which you really have to know going in. If you don't, it's going to be so confusing. <laughs> I started it, and then I had to go back and read about it. <laughs> well, at least I didn't have to do that. Oh, my bad. Shame! <laughs> the shame! I said that out loud. My bad. Yeah, you're bad. <sighs> See? But yeah, See? it was really good. You guys, everybody should read it. Everybody. Oh, cool. So Stacey says it sounds, it sounds a bit up their alley. Cool. It wasn't up my alley. <laughs> It's one of those books, I it, were it not for AJ, I would not have picked it up. The Dum Dum Donut Intellectuals, I don't know what to make of them. I don't think that I gave them too much thought, like, after they were not on the page anymore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because they were annoying, but... I don't know. <laughs> they say they turn into that sentence. The whole beginning part with his dad, the situation with with the 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 nigga whisper, <laughs> and um, how his dad, you know, died. <sighs> so the nigga whisper part, I thought was funny. <laughs> like really, and but, then he tried it and he sucked at it and. But isn't that how he ended up with the old dude as as his uh, the man servant? <laughs> that guy? Oh, 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 oh! What's his I name? I just Who kept thinking in my mind, he's just the worst slave I've ever seen in my entire life. Right? But, but he wouldn't he leave. Pay, <laughs> he he, uh, he wasn't a slave, really. Okay, pause for a second. I gotta go turn the turn the oven off. Okay. <laughs> While she's gone, what are you guys reading? Anything interesting? Good thing too, otherwise I'd have burned my squash. Are you you're making squash? What kind of squash? Spaghetti squash? Butternut. No. I've never had spaghetti squash. I grew one once. My but mom uh, likes spaghetti. I mean, my mom likes butternut squash. I don't like it. Yeah. It's good with the like in rice. I do I do a mean butternut squash risotto. That it has the it, it tastes kind of like it has cheese in it. Hmm. Thank you, Stace. <laughs> oh, wasn't the zookeeper's wife made into a movie? Was it? I think so. Never heard of it. Um, it's uh World War Two, and she's like smuggling people, smuggling Jewish people. Um, through the through the zoo, mm. I, I think I could be wrong. That sounds interesting. What you know about a book that's not YA or middle grade? I'm so proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> the shade. <laughs> it's a true story of a woman who saved Jewish people during the Holocaust. It's a movie, but I haven't seen it yet. Yep. So yeah. you were so, right. So the reason I know about it is because we like to frequent the indie theater in town. Mm. And they played it there. I didn't yeah. go see it, but they played it there. So you only knew about it because it was a movie. Yeah. At least you're honest. <laughs> I would. I mean, I didn't even know it was a book. Uh, it does actually sound kind of interesting. And for whatever reason, my 13-year-olds are really interested in the Holocaust. Because... I don't I know. Don't know. <laughs> I don't know. They 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 learn about it in their English class, and they come in all fascinated. 
whatever. It was interesting to me at that age too, just because it was something new. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, so one of the things that I high highlighted or high highlight, I don't know. Talking about, um, I think it is highlighted. Highlighted. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I thinking I'm thinking about how sometimes people are promoted to the highest level of incompetence. And he goes, knowing that the ugliest movie stars, the whitest rappers, and the dumbest intellectuals are often the most respected members of their tri their chosen profession. And I'm like, this is a thing that happens. People get promoted to the highest level of incompetence, and they're like, make more money than the people who do all the things. So another one knows, hey, tie it back to Insecure that you haven't seen yet. Oh. Good. Yeah, my turn to throw shade. I will. I I'm shade. <laughs> I'm gonna watch it. Just when there's how many episodes is it right now? Like three, four? three. Just three. Well, yeah, it'll be four tomorrow. That's not enough. I mean, I can watch but, those like but back then, to back. But then to back. we can talk about it. Oh goodness. Because it's fun to talk about. Okay, well we can talk about it next month. Yes. <laughs> Toward the end of the month, though, because we're moving. And I haven't been watching uh, Game of Thrones either. Oh, or see, I Westworld. I, you need to watch Westworld. I haven't watched Game of Thrones. <laughs> Game I of watched Thrones. the first season of Westworld. Okay. They're, the second season isn't out yet. Oh, yeah. I forgot. Oh, the trailer came out. That's what came out, right? Yeah. Okay. Did that, that, I, I watched it twice. I've been watching reruns of The Cosby Show. Don't judge me. Okay. <laughs> I can't say, you know what? I just started Blackish. We got Hulu and I just started Blackish. Mm, I only saw the first season. <laughs> I'm about, the other, the other reason we got uh, Hulu, I really want to watch Queen Sugar, which I've heard is fantastic. Have you seen The Handmaid's Tale? No. Oh, no! <laughs> Go watch it. Okay. I read the book. I read the book so, when I was doing my student teaching. It's, it follows the book, but it doesn't follow the book. Okay. I don't even remember the book, so. It's very good. Okay. Very, very good. You know, for some reason, we always start talking about TV. Yeah. <laughs> It's well, so you know, people people who have watched this before will know that we wander away from the book and start talking about other things. Random because stuff. this is a thing that we do. And then randomly <laughs> go back to the book. Exactly. So it's okay. This is this is our process. <laughs> Which we haven't done in a while. Now we're old now. I ain't old. I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. <laughs> My little brother just had a birthday yesterday. Oh, yeah? How old is he? He's 13. That's how I know I'm old. I see. <laughs> when his when his his numbers have a teen behind them, yeah, I'm old now. You see, I, I, I'm not going to consider myself old. I have, like, six gray hairs. I'm like, eh, whatever. <laughs> you don't think you're old and you have six, then I'm not old because I have none. <laughs> Oh, that's supposed to be fair. I've I've had at least one since I was in my mid twenties. So. I guess for like a decade. Well, they they're supposed to be hereditary anyway. So was it? Well, yeah. Hmm. That may, that actually makes sense because my aunt has a lot of gray hair, and my one of my boy cousins, her second to youngest son, also has a lot of gray hair, and he's a lot younger than me. He's like six, seven years younger than me. Mm. You're like, dude, all them ninth graders are giving you gray hair. <laughs> I guess he teaches freshman English. He was unpaid electricity bill dark. <laughs> what? That was a quote that I wrote down out, out of the book. He was unpaid electricity bill dark. Un oh, unpaid electricity bill dark. That's just... Talk uh, okay, I got you. <laughs> well, only at night time. I wrote down... Why can't we talk about race more honestly? What they really mean is, why can't you niggas be reasonable? 
or fuck you, white boy, if I said what I really wanted to say, I'd get fired even faster than you fire me if rakes were even any easier to talk about. That's very true. Yes, <laughs> I concur. And I also, I, I don't know, for some reason, it's only giving me percentages. It's not telling me what page. I don't know why it did that. That's just stupid. Go ahead. Uh, Attic, someone muttered, invoking the code word black thinkers use to characterize anything or anybody that makes them feel incompetent and painfully aware that they don't have the answers and assholes like me. Mm. Ooh, okay, no, three's running. Uh, what page is that? I've heard, I've heard conversations about the problematic nature of the word problematic. Because everything, Wait, um, everything is problematic. It, I've heard conver I've heard being it happened on Twitter. Um, conversation about how the word problematic is problematic. It is only because everything <laughs> now is problematic. It's 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 we're like super saturated with problematic, so it like essentially doesn't have meaning anymore. Okay. And all I get is nod. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I agree with that. I think I think that I don't like this camera. What's wrong with your camera? I have bars. You take the entire thing and I have bars. And I think it's the camera and I don't know how to change it. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. It's not that important. I don't see bars. My camera's nice. In the, no, in the, in the stream, mm -hmm. when it cuts to me, there are black bars inside. Oh, yeah, there are. I, see, I do see that. Mm -hmm. My laptop died, so I am using Tracy's webcam. Mm. Gotcha. So I could use my computer. Yeah. Eh, oh well. Whatever. Ugh. What else did you get out of the book? I need to read more literary fiction. <laughs> that is seriously. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not actually kidding. So that is, that is a that is a huge mind? takeaway for me. Also, I'm gonna go read an Invisible Man. So I can understand. Now, if you read Invisible Man, then I feel like I gotta read Invisible Man. Well, you know, we can do it together. That was not that was not actually my pick for next month, but I'm not reading that. that. I'm not reading that next month anyway because I already have. Okay. Yeah. No. <laughs> you, you have you have an agenda already. It's. it's I'm not ready for it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I am I am to the place where in the next month or so I will be reading um The Hate You Give, All American Boys. Wait, you and, haven't read The Hate You Give yet? No, no, I have. I have. Um and Dear Martin over and over and over again because those are the books I'm using in my dissertation. I know you have Dear Martin. I'm so jealous of you right now. You should have asked for it. Yeah. Huh? You should have requested it. Requested. Now there is a there's a librarian who I follow on Instagram who um, got an arc and said she'd mail it to me when she's done. So lucky you. I keep looking at it like I want to read it. I want to read it. It's, yeah, I'm I'm very excited about it. Um, well, excited is such a it's it's such a hard thing I think to be excited about novels about. You know, excited yeah. feels like it's the wrong word. Like when a book is sad and people say, I really enjoyed it. Yeah. It's like, what do you say? We need, we need, <laughs> we need new language. We need new language for that because it's, 
it's while it's not inaccurate, it also it also seems like the book was enjoyable, like it had enjoyable content. But it did have enjoyable content, right. just the subject matter. Whatever, I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. <laughs> yeah, well, it's like, like, what did I just finish? I finished one that I thought you would like, actually. Um, hold on, I can just look it up. A List of Cages. Uh, yep, that one. Ha! And uh, <laughs> you, you're faster than me. It's okay. No, um, I just remembered. And I th and I thought. Oh, okay. Because uh, you know, when you're yeah, younger, I don't your even... memory is kind of better. You know, as you get older. <laughs> Why do I do this with you? <laughs> I do this with you <sighs> every time. And watch, and when, and when we get together next month, it'll be like, every time. It won't. It won't. Dang. You've read Saga. Now, Lying. I came in here and I was just a nice person. People would think something's wrong with me. It's the truth. You know when I go to work, I'm like, I'm like this at work and I just say whatever. And then when I go to work and I'm really quiet, people are like, what's wrong? But when I talk a lot, they're like, could you shut up? But then if I'm quiet, then <laughs> I want to say something. So it's like a lose-lose. So I might as well just say what I want to say. I do you think? I'm just going to keep making that <laughs> face at you. <laughs> because apparently this is a thing that I do. So... But yeah, I have a list of cages back there somewhere. I bought it. I bought it when I bought Chintu. Chintu is... Hold on. Hold up. Wait a minute. I don't see it. Oh, it's in the living room. I'm not going to get it. Is it... Uh... It's K-I-N-T-U. What? Is it like Chintu comes, problems run, not by hit, not by kick, but by trick? No. Uganda's history reimagined through the cursed bloodline of the Chintu clan in an award-winning oh. debut. In 1750, Chintu Kiva unleashes a curse that will plague his family for generations. In this ambitious tale of the clan and of a nation, Bakumbi weaves together the story of Chintu's descendants as they seek to break from the burden of their shared past and reconcile the inheritance of tradition and the modern world that is their future. Actually, um, I think Tati is reading this right now. Hi, Lisa, how are you? <laughs> Yeah, I, I, for some reason I was on Instagram and I just saw like a million people hauling the book out of nowhere. And I was like, what is this? And why don't I know about it? Uh, it just came out. Okay. And I just bought it. When I bought a list of cages, I bought it. Because I heard a list of cages on uh, somebody's channel. It was, I think it was Simon, Simon's channel from Savage Reads. It was either his or Jen Campbell. Mm. I'm pretty sure it was Simon. And I think I picked it up because I saw it on your Instagram. Which one? Uh, List of Cages. Yep. Because I, I, I posted it on, on Instagram when I got it in the mail. I was kind of mad, though. It came dirty. And I was like, um, I don't feel like sending it back. It's good, though. I believe it. Yeah. I, I, it's one that I uh, I think... If I, can, if I can get my mom to finish... Um, my name is Leon. This is what I'll give her next. Is she, did she start reading it yet? Mm hmm Okay. Yeah, she started it when she was traveling. I don't know if she finished it. The My mother has this to... challenge in <laughs> finishing books sometimes that I that is like, you should read this. And like the you know, the 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 infamous story goes that I was trying to get her to read um what middle grade book? The one and only Ivan, and it took one of my students writing her a letter to get her to read it. So, uh, 
Leslie said, why not try to describe how you can have excitement about a book that is difficult or complex? We were trying to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the words are hard. They are. Just because there's, I mean, there's so, like, words are so, I don't know the word, I don't know what the word I'm looking for is, actually. Um, because, because, because they have specific connotations, it's hard to use them in new contexts to really articulate how, like, I feel about those, these really tough novels that make, doesn't make it sound like I'm being flippant about the content. And that's that's kind of my fear sometimes. That that's like, oh yeah, I really enjoyed this book. That every time I opened it up, I just like immediately started crying. Uh, and then people look at you like, then how did you enjoy it? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but it's, I mean, it's 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 an emotional thing. It's like you gotta. I I I've, I find personally that there's such great power in books that can make me have a visceral reaction, and the 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 author's craft that in like invokes that that visceral reaction. I agree, even if it's a bad one. So we can say that uh, we are excited that people are writing difficult things in the movie, is what Leslie says. Do you have the you still have the chat open? What'd you say? Do you still have the chat open? Yeah. I just said what she said. I see it. I don't know. I think it's, you want to say I enjoy it just because it's easier to say at you that, that you enjoy it, but that's not really what you should say. So just try to avoid saying you enjoy it and just describe what it was about and how you felt about it. I guess. I think that, I think I that would be know. really... <laughs> No, I think it'll be really interesting, especially be, especially like I think I think about the way that I write my reviews, and yeah, no, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna actively try to change the language. Well, let me know when you've come up with a format that works. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna take Leslie's uh, advice and uh, try not. She says try not to. Why not try to describe how uh, you can have excitement about a book that's difficult or complex? So. We'll see how that goes. Reviews are about. hard, period. That's why I write them on sticky notes. That's why I don't do oh. them. So, so get this. So I, I put out that call for um, for topics for Future Shelf. Mm -hmm. And at, right after I got yours and replied to you, I was like, oh, crap. All of my books are boxed up. <laughs> Why like, are you all of removing? Them. Across town. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, bigger place. So um, that doesn't cost that much more. So. so yeah, so everything is packed up. And I was like, oh, yeah, I want to do a feature shelf before school starts. School starts on Monday. No, I am not going to be doing that. <laughs> Poor feature shelf. <laughs> it's all right. It'll, it'll come back after we move. I like I, feature shelf. Yeah. Matter of fact, I'm pretty sure that's like the first video I ever saw of yours. Oh. Was a feature show. Oh god, and how long ago was that? Was that and still then, when I was filming them in and my then, classroom? And then the video with the typewriter that I really liked that you never brought back, and I was highly disappointed. You know, you know why? Because to make that two minute video, <laughs> it took about eight hours. It was. It looked. It looked like it was worth it. It was good. Oh, it was so much fun. It was so much fun, but it was so hard. <laughs> I believe it. I actually want. I actually want to bring that series back. Um, I don't even remember what the series was. It's called An Illusion in a Minute. Oh. Um, and yeah, I actually want to bring it back and have it actually be sixty seconds, um, and do Instagram video. You should. Ba basically, because one of the things, and and here's here's why this came about in the first place. Illusions are really really hard for our students because they don't read enough. Or they don't read very most. Most of them don't read very much. They don't get. They don't read for fun or on their own. Not mostly. Not mostly. No. Um, but even even so, their like their knowledge of biblical stories or their knowledge of mythological stories um, gets in the way of 
understanding what these illusions mean in the text that they're reading and it's part of our standards so they get like nailed for it if they can't figure out how these illusions work gotcha. so uh the idea is hey let me explain this to you in a really easy way so that you don't have to uh you don't you don't have to go read the thing but you still understand my my i think one of the first ones i do when i bring that back will be um uh last supper just because i can connect it to kendrick last supper mm -hmm. You know the la the Last Supper when Jesus and the disciples. Oh, were... like the actual Last Supper. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know what I thought you were talking about. I don't either. Cause you know you've you've seen Humble, right? What? You yeah, Humble, right? The video for it. Yeah, Kendrick. Yeah. That takes you long. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the video for it. Our so there's brain that is like, okay, I have been at work all night. I have been at work since ten o'clock okay. last night. Oh wow! And I am not asleep, and I have to go back to work at five o'clock. So, yeah, what? What brain cells. Right? Why are we talking right now? <laughs> because I have a life to live, and sleep just does not fit into that life. Okay, that's what that's what the issue is. Make your choices. <laughs> Anyway, um, I thought, and I and actually did this with with my eighth graders last semester. It, it was really to get them to understand, like here is the the story of this music video is separate from this particular image within the music video, and this particular image refers back to this painting, which refers back to this biblical story. And so here are the things that we can understand about about Kendrick's message based on this image. So, but I'm going to do that in 60 seconds. To get them to try to find significance and stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, and also to demonstrate that um, illusions are everywhere. It's not just in the things that they read. It's in the things, the sun, all of the things that they can around see. us. <laughs> yeah, so we went off on like an, English, that was an English, English teacher. And I didn't. I don't know. I, I I recognize that it's an illusion, but I do know what do not know what it's an illusion to. What the signs? Uh huh. It's from Fools Rush In. I haven't seen that movie in so long. The signs that everywhere. Do, do you so? Do you listen to podcasts? Um. No. <laughs> I have, but I don't actively listen to it. Okay. So one of one of the podcasts, of, even though it was really long, that I will always listen to is The Read with Crystal and Kid Fury. Yeah, right? So so this week, this week, it was, uh, so at the beginning, Kid Fury does like movie quotes and Crystal oh, never, Lord. never knows what it is. And so this week it was, um, I bind you, Nancy. I bind you from doing harm, harm to yourself and harm to like other people or something. <laughs> it was the it was the most hilarious thing because Crystal couldn't get it. And I was like in the car like, it's the craft. <laughs> Have I seen that? It's about witches. It's a very 90s movie. Is that the one with the black girl with the hair? Yes. And the hair falls out. I have. I've seen that. But I think I've only seen it like one time. Or I think I saw it when it came out. And then that was it. Yeah, it was really, really funny. So we're having this conversation here and I've got the uh I've got the live stream open in another window, like off to the left. Mm -hmm. And uh it's a little bit behind where we are. Oh yeah. So I I was like I just did one of these things and I just and then I was talking on and like I'm gonna see myself doing it over there. <laughs> <laughs> Same. It's good times. Do you, you have did your... it again? <laughs> huh? Just popped up again. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know. Right? I used to do it periodically every minute. <laughs> uh, so, what's your what's on your reading agenda for next month, or for the uh, rest of this month? I guess or next month. Weren't you supposed to pick a book? I, I yeah, I did. It's okay. packed right now though. 
We're moving. We're moving September second. So. Um. Uh, you don't know. Okay. Whatever's so, good for you. <laughs> so my my pick was allegedly uh, by Tiffany D. Jackson. Never heard of it. Hold on. Go go. Tiffany Jackson? Is that who it's by? Mm -hmm. I really like this cover. Mary B. Addison killed a baby. Allegedly. She didn't say much in that first interview with the detectives, and the media filled in the only blanks that mattered. A white baby had died while under the care of a church-going black woman and her nine-year-old daughter. I want to read it. The public convicted Mary and the jury, made it official. But did she do it? She wouldn't say. Mary survived six years in baby baby jail. Uh, Juvie. I don't know why I call it baby jail. Why does it say baby jail? I don't know why it says baby jail. <laughs> anyway, keep being, keep keep reading. Before being dumped in a group home, the house isn't really home. No place where you fear where you fear for your life can be considered a home. Home is Ted, who she meets on assignment at a nursing home. There wasn't a point to setting the record straight before, but now she's got Ted and their unborn unborn child to think about. Why is it so hard for me to read right now? I don't know. <laughs> when the state threatens to take her baby, Mary must find the voice to fight her past, and her fate lies in the hands of the one person she just trusts the most, her mama. No one knows the real mama, but who really knows the real Mary? I'm hey, this at... has got some good reviews. Uh huh. I already wanted to read it from that, the that middle part. It's funny. So, so of of my uh, of my friends on 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 uh, Goodreads who have read it, four stars, four stars, two stars, four stars. I see a two stars too. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see. Oh. <laughs> But I, I know her, so I told her. I told her we talk about it after I read it, because I understand. I understand why she gave it two stars. Uh, I was supposed to read it like a long time ago, and then I didn't. I will read it. When do you want to? Do you want to skip this month? You want to do it? You want to read it in September? I don't understand the question. Do you like? Do you want to? Are you saying? Do you want to talk about it and read it in September? Talk about it in October or? Yeah, yeah. Talk about it. Yeah. Okay. If we're gonna if we're gonna do the other every other month thing, that would actually be great. But we have to flip it because my my book club does every other month, but we're gonna talk in October. Okay, so you. So we should we should talk in September. Talk in September and then November. So you want to read it this month yeah. in August? Yeah, let's read the rest okay. of August. That's fine. And then we can go to every other month. Okie dokie. And, then I, and then I can keep my book club. Oh, look, I did it again. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. So, Let's see. It's going to pop up. In five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> oh, it's funny. Well, I'm, I'm, see, and here's the interest. Here's the other interesting thing about it. So, where mine is is not the same place as where yours is because I got it. I got the same gesture maybe like ten seconds later, at like ten seconds after you left. But that's because there, there's a delay between me seeing it and you hearing me see it. If that makes sense. I didn't think it was a ten second delay though, because I mean this is fairly synchronous in terms of our conversation. I think you just saw it before I did. It's okay. But how is that possible? I don't know. I don't know. My my feed stalled for a minute. Maybe that's it. <clears throat> okay, so allegedly by allegedly. Tiffany D. What's her last name? Jackson. Yeah, Jackson. <laughs> Which I would hold up if I if I had it, but I don't. I I can pull up a picture of it really quick. Let me see if my library has it. I'm, I actually may do that too. This is how lazy I am. 
Hmm. I do not browse for books at the library anymore. I just go to the library website and I put them on hold, whether or not they have them available or not. And then I just go to the desk and pick them up and leave. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I don't typically browse the library anymore either. Here it is. I really like that cover. It looks great. And I I love seeing books with black girls on the cover. Who doesn't? <laughs> people who are people who are anti uh, anti reading books about brown people. White people. I'm just kidding. <laughs> But wait, wait, wait. Hashtag not all white people. <laughs> no, not not white people. White people. Oh, oh. With the weird spelling, I've seen that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Stace says that uh, I rarely browse the library. I request almost everything. You are smart. Yeah, I, I do or I do the uh, overdrive more than anything else. If I can't get it on overdrive and I can get it at my local library, then I'll get it at the library. But otherwise, uh, overdrive for everything. I cannot read books. I cannot read ebooks. I just can't. No. No, 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 no. But I do have overdrive and I use it for all of my audiobooks. Hey, man. It saves a crap ton of money on audiobooks. And oh, there's an audio book of it. Let's see. I don't, where's my library tab? Library. Uh, it, uh, I can't. I wish I could go and give you guys a tour of my new library, but they don't allow cameras. Seriously? Yes. Why? Because they don't, I might like try to sneak and like press record on my phone and then just walk around with my phone in my hand where they can't see like that I'm recording anything. But they don't allow cameras. Is Something it about a uh, consent of people or some stuff? And I was like, that's stupid. Well, I can understand that. But I guess, same... well, technically, if I hadn't asked, then what? <laughs> well, and also. Like, so say you you record things and there are no people in it, then what? Or, you know, you blur the people out, then you don't have to worry about the consent. I guess. Because my, my new library listed. is really cool. They have, like, they rebuilt the whole library. They have, like, a children's section. And, like, mm. when you walk through the door, like, there's lights all around the entrance. And they change colors as you walk through. And they have, like, a movie area and a play area. And then they have the young adult section. There's a whole separate section. And then when you go upstairs, it's all the adult fiction and everything. And then in the same lot, they have um, a cafe. They have a computer, um, an internet cafe, and a regular cafe. There's a gelato stand. There's... That sounds sick. They have parking for electric cars. Then on the second floor of the library is all like um, conference rooms mm -hmm. that you can like rent out. Well, not rent out, but like reserve. Mm -hmm. And then there's a balcony and a rooftop where people can host parties or whatever they want on the rooftop. And there's that little rooms down be. at the bottom that are soundproof. So tutors and what, what is a person that a tutor tutors? A 2D? No, that's not right. <laughs> what are they called? I don't know. <laughs> a what person who receives tutoring. No, there's got to be a word for it. <laughs> when you, if you're, a, you, if you're a mentor, a mentor has a mentee. Tell them call it, call it a 2 T and be done with it. That sounds stupid. It sounds like. A name, a word for that a mom would give to a child about like their gas or something. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't sound right. <laughs> anyway, there's rooms like that that are soundproof for it. That's so, cool. And it has an elevator. 
It sounds like a good spot. My library is a little sad. The advantage to my library is that our youth services librarian will order me anything that I want. So that is a bonus. You have a nice librarian. Yeah. Yeah, our librarian's pretty cool. But we don't, don't have it. You can you can request stuff on Overdrive. <sighs> I don't know what she's sorry. Tracy is out shopping. Hi, Tracy. I was hoping that you said. Um, she laughed at me because I was so excited that we were doing this. <laughs> what rally stuff? Tati, what you talking about? Oh, um, in, I think in North Carolina? Is it, is, is in one of the Carolinas, I think, there is this, um, uh, there's, like, white nationalists are rallying. And they had to break out. They had to bring the cops out. And this is a, like, fun. no. It was on Twitter this morning. It doesn't sound fun at all. Oh, Virginia, oh, Charlottesville. Okay, I saw Charlotte, the Charlotte part, and I just, it's not gonna. Uh, it's yeah. a Nazi rally. So, Nazi, that's where you live in Charlottesville. Because. That's where most of my sperm donor's family is from. I'm sorry, my biological father's family is from. <laughs> okay, so she says no. So it's in, Vir it's in Virginia. Okay. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's kind of heavy. I saw a video, a short video, <sighs> when, when the riot police came out. But there, there are a bunch of people walking around heavily armed. Um, I saw, I saw the 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 tweet that I saw said something along the lines of, "Had it had it been black people, they would have shut it down already, basically, and everybody would have been arrested." People walking well, we around with, with uh, tiki torches and stuff. Uh, Tracy says hi. Hello, somebody. And then I'm going to do the thing that she asked me to do really quick. Stay says, it's terrifying how brave people like that are. They literally yeah. don't fear black backlash. Blacklash. Well, why? I mean, why would they? Honestly. It's their white privilege. But God forbid anybody says that. We could, oh. Can you feel something yeah, that, that don't happen to that's you? Fine. That's fine. That is true. Yeah, yeah. It, it is It is scary. I would go look it up, but I just don't need that kind of stress right now. Yeah. Especially on no sleep. Yes, yeah, since you finna have to go back to work, you wanna have to deal with people and things. People that I don't like already. <laughs> yeah, Tati said don't. <laughs> I'm not. Yeah. I think I'm gonna I like I'm gonna go uh I, I will look and see a little bit later. Just what people are saying on Twitter. But I'm not gonna I probably won't click on anything. Right? The pending nuclear war. Like oh my god. <sighs> Last I saw, um the tw the tweeter in chief hadn't said anything, like hasn't called Guam to check on him. <laughs> I've heard that before, but never out loud. <laughs> I refuse, I refuse to say the words president and his name. So. Cheolicious. Yeah, because I, I feel like, like if, why would you not contact the, there, it's US territory. 
it's scary. Yeah. So on that note. <laughs> well. <laughs> Yeah. I don't know, man. Depressing. <laughs> Voldemort. Voldemort. <laughs> nice. President Von Clownstick. I kind of don't think you should call him either one of those because I actually like Voldemort and Tom Riddle, even though they're the same person. Do tell. The, not like, see, words thing. Not like <laughs> as in like, but that story interests me. Okay. A lot. And his does not. Okay. Fair. <laughs> I think he's, I mean, he's a really good villain. You know? Yeah. Actually, his backstory was the best part of the sixth book. That one was... Uh, Half-Blood Prince. Blood Prince. Yeah. Tati says, then he can be happy from sugar. I don't, I don't know what that means. We haven't read that. <laughs> oh, this, is, this is a book that I'm not familiar with? Yeah, I, I heard of it, but I haven't read it. Oh, okay. <laughs> is that is that the that's the Bernie Sel McFadden one? Cause I haven't read that. Uh oh. Oh. M me and Bernie Sel McFadden, we have issues. <laughs> we we got some we got some all caps in here. OMG. <laughs> <laughs> Look. That's all I have to say is look. <laughs> oh, I, I'm going to plead ignorance on this one. I know about it. I just haven't read it. Because, I, like I said, me and Bernie and Sonic McFadden have issues. I've read only two of her books, and one of them I didn't like, and one of them I did. So, so you have a 50-50 chance of enjoying this one. Yeah, yes. but the first one that I read is the one that I didn't like. Oh. Well... I don't know what to tell you. And I was very skeptical. Skeptical. <laughs> words. <laughs> words, 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 words. Oh, man. <laughs> I was skeptical about the second one, but it ended up being really good. If you want to know, the first one was Gathering of Waters, and I realized that I'm not that big of a fan of magical realism. Uh, I kind of just, I think it's stupid. I think it's like a cop-out. It's like, I want to write science fiction, but I really don't know how, so I'm just going to do magical realism. See, and I, and I like magical realism. I don't like it. Okay, okay, but wait. Uh, nope, that's fine. Never mind. What? I was gonna, I was gonna argue, I was gonna argue Kindred, but Kindred is staunchly sci-fi. Yeah, it's time travel. And then, oh my God, that, oh yeah, and the one that I did like was the Book of Harlan, which was really good. Uh, so in terms of ga the Gathering of Waters, that's the one you didn't like, right? No, that's the one you did like. No, that's the one I just. It was like okay, and then in Gathering retrospect, of waters? Yeah. okay, because you rated it four stars. Did I? You did. Are you sure? I'm looking at it. Was it an accident? I don't know. There's no comment. You rated it four. Dee Dee rated it four. How long ago did I read this? 2013. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's when, saying, I was, when I was twelve. You're more discerning now. No, it's just, you know how, like, in, I don't know, when you finish reading a book, it's like, when you read it, it's like, I like that book. And then you finish, and you're thinking about it, and you're like, that book was stupid. Yeah, I just finished one that, like that, I, what is it? Oh, The Secret Language of Sisters. My, uh, my librarian at work said, you should read this, and, and I, and I read it, and I was like, 
Tati, uh, I'm pretty sure Didi is sending that to me. That, that is that the one that has the sequel? Because she's sending both of those. So I will read them one day. <laughs> it's not going to be today. Someday in the future. <laughs> I have so many books, so just so many books. And then I'm just so disappointed about what we lose. It just put me in a reading slump. I'm just pissed about that. Mm -hmm. Because it's just, I'm pretty sure I'm not going to pick that book up again. It is getting a big fat DNF. So. It's all right. Don't waste your time if it's not working for you. Too many things to read. I'm just sad because it's like only 200 pages. Why couldn't it be good? It wasn't. It just, no, just. <sighs> I I'll talk about it later. All right. Elaborate on a video or something. <laughs> <laughs> what did I want to see? Or I wanted to read um, Orleans. I think, I think you were the one who said something about that. The Sherry L. Smith. Yeah, I didn't hear good things about that. And I gave that book away. Oh, yeah. Okay. But you might like it. The reason why I didn't hear good things about that is because the people that I heard bad things from are from Louisiana. Mm -hmm. And they told me that I wouldn't like it because okay. of that. So I trusted Mis them. Mis misrepresenting uh, the area. Yeah. Okay. But if you don't know about the area, then right. So that's and this is where where prior knowledge comes in again. Yep. Uh, the other book I got in that box was well, so I got I got I got Brown Girl Dreaming in that box. It was a uh, one of my page habit boxes. And Which I didn't like that much. Brown Girl Dreaming. In comparison to another Brooklyn. Ugh. Yeah, but you can't compare, like, two completely different genres and audiences. Mm. It's like apples and oranges. I wish I had read Brown Girl Dreaming first. Yeah, I'm mailing it to my mother. Um, because Tracy bought me a copy right after it came out. So I have a hardcover copy, I got a paperback copy in the box. What? <laughs> Yeah, I checked it out for her from the library. It's like, hey, it's on, it's on Overdrive. You can just read it off Overdrive. She's like, I don't want to read it with a digital book. <laughs> <laughs> like, fine, mom, I will mail it to you. <laughs> and then the third book in that box was called Library of Fates. Never heard of it. Um, it... The author is Indian. I think it's set in India and has something to do with the library. Um, I've heard good things and I'm excited, except that I packed it. Because I did not have the forethought to pull. I have a little, I have a little TBR shelf on the bottom of one of my bookshelves. And I didn't pull those out and set them aside before Tracy packed up that bookshelf. I hate moving. It's the worst thing in the world. Yeah, I'm even after even after you like unpack, it's like, now I have to rearrange stuff and make it look nice and make it look right. And now I have to get settled and, ugh. Yeah. I don't like it. I'm not, I'm not thrilled about the pros the prospect of moving. I am, I am thrilled, however, about the house that we're moving to. Um, there will be more space. I do not have to share a desk anymore. Yay, new house. There's a lot more space. Yes, okay, it does. Tati. So <laughs> we're just talking about nothing. We are. So I am going to end this live show. All right. It has been great. Yes. Thank you guys for watching. We will see you in September, right? Yeah, in September. TBA. Because I, I, I'm not sure when. Because, you know, yeah. work and time are things we'll tweet that about it. don't go together. So, yeah. Bye, you guys. Bye.